Okay, so today we're going to make some chocolate fudge crinkle biscuits. And I'm going to move the camera down and take you through the equipment and the ingredients. Okay, you should be able to see that. So I have got in front of me a wooden spoon. I have got a spatula just in case the ingredients stick to the outside of the bowl. I've got a sieve to sieve my cocoa um, powder and also my flour and a glass bowl to uh, mix my ingredients in. I do also have a teaspoon because you're going to need a teaspoon of baking powder. So in terms of ingredients, I'll talk you through those. We have got 60 grams of cocoa powder and you can see this is quite lumpy so I'm going to sieve this. Then we have 200 grams of caster sugar. You can use granulated if you want. Um, alternatively, you can pop your granulated into a food processor, a bit like a Nutribullet, to uh, make it into caster. But don't uh, blitz it for too long, otherwise you'll end up with very, very fine sugar, like icing sugar. Then you've got 60 ml of vegetable oil or rapeseed oil. Two large eggs. We have the baking powder. So I'm going to use a, a teaspoon of that. Then we have 180 grams of plain flour, not self-raisin, plain flour. If you've only got self-raisin, you can use self-raisin, but don't add the baking powder. And then 70 grams of icing sugar, which is just to roll the biscuits in afterwards. So if you don't have any icing sugar, you don't need it, you can make the biscuits without it. Okay. So I'll let you get your ingredients ready and I'll see you in a minute for cooking. Okay, so hopefully you've gathered your ingredients and your equipment together. You do also need a whisk to whisk your eggs and obviously some baking paper and trays to bake your biscuits on as well. So this recipe involves you leaving the um, biscuit mix in the fridge for an hour. You can pop it in the freezer for about 20 minutes if you want um, and then you can cook it. It won't freeze, it's just to chill it and to cool it down, uh, ready for when you bake it. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to put my cocoa powder in the bowl. So I'm going to move the camera down. I'm going to sieve this so you can see how I do that. So if you've never used a sieve before, you'll uh, sort of just be careful because when you do sieve it into the sieve, then if you don't lower that sieve, you're going to get the um, cocoa powder all over the place. Just give a little knock on the side, keeping it low into the bowl. Okay, you can do this with your hand as well if you want. And you just need to be patient with it. You can then just take some of those lumps out of the sieve, pushing it through the sieve at the end. And any big lumps that are stubborn, like that one, just take out. Okay. So I'm now going to add the caster sugar. These lumps in the caster sugar will just break down, so you don't need to sieve those. Okay, and then we're also going to add the oil. And I'm gonna give that a mix, carefully at first, because I don't want to lose any of that cocoa powder. Okay, break down those lumps of sugar, and just give it a mix. Okay, we're then going to beat in the eggs. Okay, one at a time. So you can see it might look a bit lumpy at this stage and that's just because that wet ingredient of the oil is mixing and forming lumps with some of the dry ingredients. Okay, so just try and break that down as much as you can. So we've got our eggs, so I'm going to break that in and give that a whisk. So moving the spoon out of the way and I'm just going to whisk that in one at once. And you can see that the mixture will start to come together. Okay, we'll pop the other one in. Make sure you've given it a good enough crack. You don't want to get any shell in there. If you do get shell in the mixture, if you just wet your finger, you should be able to just lift that out. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. It's more when it's in liquid that it's an issue. Okay. So we've got a nice smooth mixture there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the baking powder, if I move my bowl along you can see, put my baking powder in with my flour and if you like that salty sweet flavour you can add a little pinch of salt at this stage if you want. I'm going to give that a mix 
okay and then what I'm going to do is stir this in so I'm going to go back to my wooden spoon until it forms a dough so back to the wooden spoon I'm going to pop that flour in there you can sieve the flour if you need to and then I'm just going to gently fold so folding is just bringing the spoon up and over my grandma used to say to make a figure of eight okay and I quite like to turn the bowl around every now and then just to make sure we're incorporating all of that flour now if your eggs are not large enough you might find the mixture a little dry I would just add a teaspoon of water and if you need another teaspoon pop it in afterwards okay but you will have to get your hands in this to bring the mixture together so make sure you've washed your hands okay so it's quite a stiff dough so I'm just gonna scrape off with my fingers any bits here okay and I'm just gonna with one hand just bring that dough together okay and this is where you would then pop it in the fridge so we've got the ball of dough I'm just going to pop mine in a bowl okay I'm going to pop that in the fridge and just let it rest for an hour or the freezer for 20 minutes okay so I've taken my mixture out of the freezer mine's been in there for 20 minutes and I'm going to use my teaspoon to create little balls of dough uh, which I'm going to then drop into the icing sugar to coat so I'll turn the camera down and you can see what I'm doing okay so I've got my two bowls one of my mixture and one of my icing sugar and I've got my trays with my baking paper on them here so I'm literally just going to get a little teaspoon and just try to handle this as little as possible okay and you're going to make about 20 of these so I'm going to just roll those in the dirt, in the icing sugar rather and then I'm going to pop them on the baking paper now you don't need to squash these down because as they cook they will flatten out so you need to make sure that you've got enough room on your paper for them to spread out a little so it might mean that you need to cook these in two different batches and that's not a problem just pop your mixture back in the fridge or the freezer and then wait until these are finished cooking you need to pop your oven on 190 degrees to cook these and they're only going to take about 10 minutes now when you take them out of the oven they're going to be really soft and they will harden up as they cool so you might want to leave them on the tray for a little while before you start to move them and the best thing I think to do is to pop them on a cooling rack if you don't have a cooling rack just use your grill tray um, from in your grill make sure it doesn't have any bacon on it there or anything like that obviously first so give it a little clean if you need to and then you can just pop your biscuits to cool on there or if you've got any um, pan racks or anything like that even the racks out of your oven but take them out before you put your oven on and it just lifts them up and allows that air to come in between them and allows them to cool a bit quicker so as soon as you've got your trays like this okay you're just going to pop them in the oven I'm just going to pop six on a tray so I'm going to have to do mine in two batches pop them in the oven and I will see you just as I've taken them out of the oven okay okay so I've taken the cookies out of the oven and these cookies don't go flat like regular cookies they are a raised cookie so I'll move the camera down I've started moving them onto the cooling rack and to do that I'm using a palette knife but you could just use a fish slice if you've got one of those um, or burger flip if you call it that so I'll move the camera down and you can take a look okay so as you can see um, they look like um, sort of snowballs with the icing sugar on here and just gently lift them I would leave them on the tray for about five minutes to cool first and then just gently lift them onto your cooling rack and just make sure that they are completely cool before you serve them I hope you enjoy them